Hello. Hi, hi. Okay. I'm just going to check on making sure that everything's live on the computer and uh, we'll wait for some people to join us. Just a minute and we'll get right to it. Okay. Cheryl. Um, excellent. I'm glad you're here. I'm trying to figure out Facebook like I always do. Um, but I'm having a moment <laughs> like I always do. Okay. Yay. Some more. Hello, Susan. Good morning or afternoon. I guess it just turned afternoon. Um, Excellent. Yay, I'm so glad people are here. Give me one more second. A couple more people are going to join us, I'm sure. And um, I'm going to... Um, I'm trying to share this live video. And for some reason, it's not letting me share it as myself. Because that's what Facebook likes to do. Um, Alrighty, yay. So glad that people are here. Hello, Stephen. Excellent. Well, I have decorated the studio and my home earlier than I think I ever have, because that's what we're doing, 2020 style. Um, and I am completely in the spirit. And so today, I thought when we uh, are introducing the Key of A book, which is displayed behind me, um, when we're doing that, that we would also learn a classic Christmas song. Um, so we'll do that. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, it's kind of fun. The tree came from our yard. It's not the tree that took down the electrical pole that fell on our vehicles earlier in the week. It's a different tree. Um, alrighty. So today let's get talking about, um, hello Shirley. Welcome. Welcome. Um, let's get talking about this new book that Jam with Lauren just put out. Jam with Lauren. Hello, Mike. Uh, Lauren being myself and the other part of Jam with Lauren is Heather Craft. And um, this is, um, hello Jamaica, this is available now on jamwithlauren.com. Um, if you go to the ebooks, you can find um, links to both the key of A and the chord book. They're instantly downloadable PDFs. And thanks to our friend and student Mike's help, the PDF is actually interactive and I will show that off um, in a little bit. So you don't necessarily have to print it off if you don't want to. It comes as a PDF. I decided to print mine off um, and I just printed it at the local UPS store. I'm sure there are online places that you could do it. I just wanted to get it right around the corner from me. Um, so I printed it off. It's 136 uh, pages and it's a uh, beautiful because Heather makes beautiful things and um, we have an amazing table of contents which covers um, 20 possible chords now I have to say it is not every single chord that could happen in the keys of a major and a minor 
but it is 20 quarts. And I kind of had to cut myself off after that because we were already at 136 pages. So it's quite a lot of quarts, quite a few quarts. Um, that will help you <laughs> in your musical journey um, in the key of A anyway. And so I wanted to take a moment. Um, <laughs> you did nothing, just complained. <laughs> No, you. Th I, I'm gonna thank you, Mike, because you gave us the idea, and then Heather made it super duper cool. Um, you're right. So, um, okay, some people have emailed me um, on Jam with Lauren and asked me what the difference is between the books, and so I want to just take a moment and explain what's going on um, and why have a key of a book. Sorry, I'm backwards right now. Okay, sorry. Uh, why should we have a key of a book? Um, and so this all started off um, with the major scale download, okay, of how to make a major scale. That is pretty much the most important building block of all music, of how to build a scale and knowing the half, where the half steps fall. Um, and this nice little nine page workbook uh, takes you through uh, quite a few scales and it's beautifully color coded and this is what kind this is really what started Heather and I on these kind of workbooks together so this is free and I recommend you going and downloading it from the site under the freebies page if you haven't already um, and then um, the next thing that we built off of the major scale book was the chords book that came out this past summer and the chords book talks about how to build a chord on the first note the fourth note and the fifth note of a scale and what a chord is so the one the four and the five in a major scale end up being all major chords and when I asked students what kind of things they wanted to see next I got a lot of um, requests for things that dealt with minor and how to deal, um, how to work on minor chords and minor scales. And so I thought about how to put that down on paper and that's when I came up with the minor scale download. And so this is, a, this is pretty comprehensive because the minor scale is a moving target. And so there are three different versions of each minor scale. Um, and this book goes into great detail um, comparing the scales. And we came up with this pretty little arc that I have never ever seen before. I've always hen scratched it, um, chicken scratched it on uh, students' notebooks and it never ever looks this good. And so this is kind of what made me think about, all right, if I was gonna build a minor chord book, what do I do? And, um, and often when you're playing in a minor key, we're using major chords and vice versa. If we're playing in a major key, we often play it minor chords as well. But in the folk tradition, if we're doing a three chord tune, the one, the four, and the five are, are major. They, they just, they're what we call diatonically occurring um, chords are major. Diatonically means they just happen to naturally end up being that way. Those notes are in the scale. And so I started thinking about, I can't just build a minor chord book. Um, and we use these minor chords in a major key and we use major chords in a minor key. So what can we do? So that is how, that's the long story of how the key of A book came about. And so this book deals with, as I said, 20 chords, um, all in relation to A being the first note of the scale. So it could be the first note of the major scale or it could be the first note of the minor scale. Um, but A is one, that's the first note. And so all the other chords in relation are based on that. So if we're building um, an A seven chord, that would be a one seven. Or if we're building, um, let's see, an F sharp minor chord, that would be the sixth chord. And, it's, and the reason why I'm talking about the numbers and not just the letters is because that's how the chords function. And if you're familiar with my teaching or have been a Jam with Lauren student, um, you are probably very aware at this point that I'm a big proponent and big fan of learning. Hey, Micah, great to see you. Um, I'm a big proponent of learning um, chord progressions and how and why the chords move 
from one chord to the next. Meaning this chord, I'm on this chord, what's its function and its purpose and how am I going to get to the next chord? And each chord has a function or purpose and it's in relation to what the one chord is. What is the first note of the scale? So the descriptions of all of these chords and the functions are based on A being the first note of the scale. So somebody asked me like, oh, I see that there's 20 different chords or 20 different, uh, 20 different chords in here. Does that mean there's 20 different keys? No, it means that there's one key, the key of A, and these chords could all happen and I've numbered them and talked to you about the function if they were happening in the key of A. So I hope that gives a little bit of an example. Um, the table of contents, we go through A major, A7, A minor, B flat major, B minor, B major, B diminished, C major, C sharp minor, C sharp major, D major, D minor, E major, E7, E minor, F major, F sharp minor, F sharp major, G major, G sharp diminished. I talk about the function, as I said, and then I also, this is the big thing that was kind of similar to the chord book, is that I show you how to build the chord and where to find it on your fingerboard. So at the very beginning, this is A major chord, we line up the scale. Notice that the half steps are between the third and the fourth note and the seventh and the first. Um, that's never gonna change for a major scale pattern. Okay, and so then we find the root, the third and the fifth, the every other note, and I explain this in, a, in great detail prior to, I'm skipping a couple steps here, but it's in the book. A, C sharp, E, and A. And then over here, this is what we call a fingerboard map or, and or the arpeggios. And so instead of having the arpeggios in the black dots on music notation, here it is mapped out for you on your fingerboard. And so this column, if you have a C string, which I do, or if you're a cellist or violist, you would have a C string, the G string, which all of us, uh, all, every string player has a G, okay? A D, an A, and an E. So the, this book is a map based um, for instruments tuned in fifths. So that would be fiddles, uh, violas, cellos, mandolins. Um, guitars have these strings, but they're tuned in fourths. So um, it's going to it's gonna look a little backwards for guitars. However, if you're a guitarist and you wanna know about the fiddle or you wanna know the theory, you could totally grab this book and, ex and learn about the function. So here are all the notes that are in the A chord mapped out for you. So on the C string, you have a C sharp, D, E, F sharp, here's the open G, there's a G sharp, A is in the chord, etc. So, and also the, of course they match whatever color is over here. So if you're trying to find the A, the root of the chord, it's yellow and you're going to find all the A's on your fingerboard. Okay, um, so that's what's happening. Um, I want to point out some other cool things that are in the book. Um, in the back of the book, there are um, I'm getting there, <laughs> flipping through all the pages. This is why the PDF is actually kind of helpful. Um, there are common chord progressions for you to practice with, because now what you've done, if you've learned all of these chords, which I'll talk about in just a second, you don't have to learn all the chords. You don't have to learn all of them everywhere. Um, and I, I need to back up and do some other things. But after you've learned the chords or learned some of the chords, you can go through and be like, okay, now what am I gonna do with them? And you can practice these chord progressions and you can use, you can practice them with some practice worksheets. And that's what we're going to do today, actually. We're going to learn a song. Um, I'm gonna tell you what the chords are, as opposed to teaching you what the chords are. I'm gonna tell them to you for the sake of time. And we're gonna find them in the book, and we're gonna map them out, and then play them. Um, so a couple other things. This book definitely um, uses the letter names, like an F-sharp major chord or an F-sharp minor chord. Um, but it also uses the numbers, because I, as I said earlier, the numbers help you with the function, okay? So you're going to find the Roman numerals as numbers. Roman numerals are um, kind of from the classical world, but what's nice about the Roman numerals is that if they're uppercase, they're a major chord, and if they're minor, if they're, if they're, minor, they're gonna be a lowercase chord. <laughs> yes, I said that, a lowercase Roman numeral, yeah. Um, 
so that's kind of nice. And then I also, I wanna jump back for a sec. I skipped a step that I wanted to talk about that once you have found all the A's on your fingerboard, this map, all of the A chords, the A's and all the C sharps and all the E's and all, um, all over your fingerboard, then the next step is what we call voicing the chord. So if you played them one after another, which I'm gonna grab my fiddle and I play all of these notes, one after another would be an arpeggio. So. So I just played every single color note. So some of them were duplicates because I could play my fourth finger or my open string. And so I did that. What we just played were all the chord tones. I played them one after another, so that's called an arpeggio. Now if I play them at once, that's me voicing a chord. And so what happens next in the book is that you'll find on the first page all the different ways, all the ways to combine the notes that are in an A chord on your C and your G string. The next page will be all the ways to combine the notes that are in an A chord on your G and D strings. Next page would be on your A, the a, all the notes in the A chords on your D and your A string, all the notes that are in the A chord on your A and your E strings. So today, let's play the notes that are in an A chord um, on the A and the D. Now, I am going to do this for you. I'm, uh, later on, I'm gonna bring the book even closer to you so you can see it um, better. Um, but for right now, the A chord, they're listed and then they're demonstrated or uh, mapped out for you. So I could play my first finger E on my open eye. I could play that same E with my C sharp. I could play my fourth finger A with my open A for a nice unison sound. I could play that same fourth finger with my C sharp. And then I could play my fourth finger at both strings. But that's pretty hard. You might as well just play open A and E at that point. So that just gave us five different ways to play an A chord on two strings. And so you can do that on every single chord that's in this book. A good way to start would be to pick a set of strings and pick a chord and start memorizing those. Say, I'm gonna memorize all the ways to play my A chord on my A and D string. That would be something that you could do. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna memorize all the ways I can play my D chord on my D and my A strings, or my E chord on my A and my E strings. Pick two strings and memorize a bunch of different chords on those two strings. That would be a good way to start. You can pick whatever strings you want. I usually say start with your lower strings because that's where you're gonna be playing backup. But leave me, it I doesn't really matter because you're gonna use those double stops um, in your melodies and it will be nice to practice along with them there. Okay, um, let's see. Um, okay, I wanna show you really quickly what the PDF looks like and how that's interactive thanks to uh, Mike's good thinking and Heather's um, amazing wizardry. Um, where did it go? There he goes, okay. Okay, so here I am on my iPad as it's downloaded and I'm at the table of contents. Here's the key of A. It would look better if I wasn't horizontal here, but I'm gonna leave it this way. Um, so we've got the table of contents. Let's say I want to play um, let's say an E7 chord. So I go to E7 and I click on E7 and then it brings me to the E7 page and I learn all about the function of 5-7 and I learn how to spell an E7 chord. Hi Auntie Jen, Auntie Jen's watching. Hello, yay. Um, that's my godmother. <laughs> um, and so, um, this, you, you learn all about the function and how to spell an E chord. And then again, the arpeggio of all four notes of the E7 chord. And then all of the maps. Remember the first page is gonna be C and G, the second page is gonna be G and D, then D and A, then A and E. So 
then when you say, okay, I'm done working on my E7 chord, what am I gonna do now? You touch the logo and it brings you back to the table of contents. So you will be able to see what you need to do next. Pretty cool, right? So I'm, I'm mentioning this because if some people are like, oh, I don't know if I wanna print it out, it's a lot of pages. Um, it's kind of, you don't, you don't have to scroll, scroll, scroll. You can just click, which is pretty nice. Okay, so I would like to teach you the chords to Frosty the Snowman. You guys game for Frosty the Snowman today? I'm gonna um, get reset up for a minute, but I am not super great at memorizing these words. Um, but I figured out that we could play Frosty the Snowman with the following chords. A major, A7, B minor, B major, C sharp minor, D major, E major, E7, F diminished, which isn't even in the book because there are so many chords that I could have put in the book, F sharp minor, and F sharp major. So I think that's 11 chords that we're going to play today and we're going to voice them. So. Uh, mm, Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corn cob pipe and a bun nose and two eyes made out of coal. Frosty the snowman was a fairy tale they say, but the children. What is it? Fur is made of snow. Ah, uh, the children know that he came to life one day. There must have been some magic in that old silk that they found. For when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. Oh, Frosty the Snowman. What happens next was alive as he could be and the children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me um there's more i'm just gonna cap it at that um alrighty. so if you're game let's talk about what the chord progression is so i'm going to um readjust here because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Move this out of the way. And I have this all marked out. Can we see? Oh, it's a little high. Frosty the snowman here. Okay. And grab my fiddle. All right. So I have copied, this is funny, okay. I have, <laughs> I need to sit down or I'm gonna be foolish. Okay, I have copied a worksheet page. Um, hi Susan, um, <laughs> that's funny, I love Burl Eyes. Um, I've copied a workbook page from the back of the chord book. So the, remember at the back I said there are workbook sheets. Um, and so I printed one out, one of these guys. And what's nice about this, what I like about this, um, and it's here so you can see too, is that you can write the chord progression on the top line and you can either use the Roman numerals or the letter names, whatever your preference is. And then over here you can choose what strings you're going to be voicing the chords on okay and um there are eight blocks and i used that for um bars you could use you could figure each measure each ball each block is a is a measure um and so you can write out a chord progression in it and so i have done that i did a little prep for frosty and i think it's probably i think it's probably possible for you to play frosty with fewer chords, okay? Um, but I tried to 
get a bunch of them in there because the book has a bunch of them and I wanted you to see that if you go to any kind of, if you Google any kind of uh, song and you have the lyrics and the chord progression and you're like, I'm gonna, I wanna do this in the key of A and you could either transpose it on a site or it's already in A um, or you wanna figure it out for yourself, any of that, you're like, I'm in the key of A, I have this list of chords I and I have the chord progression, I can use my key of A book look up the chord and um, fill out my voicing. So that's what we're going to do um, for the remainder of today's lesson. And if any of you are joining in, most I can see that most of you are Jam with Lauren students. Um, this is gonna stay live. And so if you're watching after the fact or if you're watching on YouTube later and thinking, about either getting one of the um, Jam with Lauren books or possibly coming, becoming a Jam with Lauren student, we do these kind of things, these, these lives um, a couple times a month. And I um, am teaching mostly uh, concepts on tunes. And so this, this is a new um, concept for us of mapping out and voice leading um, the chords and I just want to talk a little bit about voice leading. Voice leading is meant and, and I talk about it in the book as well but voice leading is is an idea of your voice is singing from one note to the next and so we're going to play two of the notes in a chord and so normally that would be two singers and if one singer was able to um, sing a line comfortably then that's good voice leading. If the, if the note choices that the singer is having to sing is jumping all around then that's not going to work out so well and it won't be comfortable to sing and it won't send it won't sound great it won't blend and so we're going to try to move as uh, little as possible when we're doing our chord choices okay so first of all let's just start off with what the chord progression is to frosty so the first phrase and the third phrase even though the lyrics are different um are the same melodically and harmonically so this line i have put as the first and third phrase um, here's our second phrase, our fourth phrase, and then these two lines are the chorus. So if I went along and I sang this, sorry, it's hard for me to point and sing and play at the same time. You know what? Maybe I will use my piano for just a sec because I can do that. Okay, so we've got frosty, the whistle with the A, and this happens for three beats, so I'm gonna play it three times. A, A7, the two, D, back to A. And then the second phrase goes D, D, A, B minor, E, E7. And then this, I'm gonna go back up to the third phrase. A, A7. down to my fourth phrase. D, D, A, F sharp, B minor, E, A, A7. Here's the chorus. D, D, C sharp, F sharp, B, E, A. Next line goes E, back to the first phrase, one, A, A7, D, D, A, and then I think there's a lot more of the song, but we're just going to wrap it up. We're going to play the fourth phrase, D, D, A, F sharp, B minor, E, A, and then we'll just end it there. Okay, I did that to point and play and sing all at the same time. Um, because I need two hands to play my fiddle and I could do that with just one hand on, on the piano. But I would definitely recommend going through and playing just the root of the chord, okay, on your fiddle. You could, or whatever instrument you're on. Um, so I'm gonna do it again on the fiddle this time and instead of pointing, I'm going to sing. So I'm just playing the name of the chord, what we call the root, okay? So that could sound like, here we go, one. I know you can't see me. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Wrong way. Oh, 
I'm not trying to make you dizzy. I'm backwards here, so it doesn't look backwards later. Okay, so I know I'm headless right now. All right, here we go. So, ready, and A, A7, D. enough right there that's a lot of chords but now we're gonna actually voice them and so you may not play the name of the chord sometimes sometimes you're gonna play the other notes that are in the chord and I've done this and we might um, we might do like the cooking show thing where everything's prepped and then all of a sudden magically the whole thing comes about because I have that prepped and I don't want to take up so much of your time um, but I want to do a little bit of it with you today so if we were looking at this and I'm gonna set my fiddle down for just a sec. And you grab your A book or you click on it, okay? Hey, Jeff, nice to see you from across the pond. Um, okay, so, um, and I'm gonna grab my pencil and we're going to fill out how to play um, these chords. So first of all, let's choose what string we're going to be on. Let's choose um, to be on the D string and the A string right now. Okay. And um, so F, F diminished or F sharp diminished on the bottom line. Um, the bottom line, it's going to be E and then F diminished and then F sharp minor. <laughs> that diminished chord is often in Christmas songs. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the A chord and we're going to go to the D and the A string voicings, which is here. Okay. Um, and oh, I skipped, sorry. I'm on the A7 chord. I need to be just on the A chord. Here I am. Okay. So here I am. I am going to grab a voicing. I'm going to grab this A and C sharp voicing. So I'm gonna use my fourth finger on the D string and my C sharp, my second finger on the A string, okay? That's just the voicing that I'm gonna pick right now, somewhat randomly. I did try it out ahead of time, but I just want you to know you can pick any of those voicings. Sometimes if you know that the melody, no, um, if you know what the melody note is, try to uh, choose a voicing that doesn't have the melody note in it and then you get the whole chord and it sounds the best. Okay, so um, my D string note is an A, and my A string note is a C sharp. So I'm gonna put that there. And I'm gonna continue playing that until my next chord, which is an A7. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to my A7 page, and I am going to try to grab a note, a voicing, that uses either one of the notes that I've already chosen or something that's really close to it. That would be the good voice leading. Okay, so since there is a C sharp voicing on here, I'm going to keep that playing that same C sharp and I'll drop the A to a G. The A goes down to the seventh. Okay, so keep the C sharp, drop down to a G. Alrighty, and then go to the D chord. That's the four chord. Let's go to the D chord in the book. You can talk about spelling it, blah, 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 all of the things. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna skip for right now and I'm gonna go to the, the page that has all of the D chord voicings on the D and the A string, okay? And I'm gonna pick something that is close to the C sharp and the G that I've got, okay? The C sharp wants to push up to the D and the G wants to step down to the F sharp. 
That's just how these chords work. There's that contrary motion. So um, that is, where am I? F sharp and D, that's this voicing right here. The F sharp and the D. See here was the C sharp and the G, um, was the C sharp and the G from the other page. I can flip back and show you that. Let's see. I want you to see how that works. So when I did this, C sharp and the G, the C sharp's gonna go to the D and this G is gonna go to the F sharp. They're gonna swap and it's gonna sound gorgeous. Okay, so that's what we've picked out so far. And then we're going to go back to an A chord. So you could go back, this D could go down to the C sharp. Okay, and you could do the same exact voicing that you already know, you could do the A, but let's grab a different one. Let's, let's do a different one, because why not? Let's maybe grab about the E and the C sharp right there, okay? Because we know the D wants to step down to the C sharp. Let's grab the E. And I'm gonna put the A in there just because you have an extra beat. You could keep playing the same voicing. So before we go on, I wanna grab my fiddle and I want you to hear what we just did. And I'm gonna play with my bow so you can hear it, but it's hard to sing and play and be heard on my little phone camera. So um, let me stand so you can see my hand. Where's my hand? It's coming, it's coming. Can you see that? Or would it be better if I'm like this? I don't know. Is that better, guys? Do you like that better? I think, I don't think I like that. I think I like this, where you can kind of see it front on. Okay. So the first voicing was the A on the D string and the C sharp. Mm -hmm. This is my melody no front. So I'm just gonna hum the melody. A chord, A chord. And then this fourth finger is gonna drop down to the G while my C sharp stayed there. So one, two, three, next chord. And then I swap my fingers, F sharp and D. That's with me adding that A at the end. So we just did, here's A7. Pizzicato, just so you could hear the words or the Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul. That's what we've done so far. Everybody doing okay out there in Facebook land? Later to be YouTube land when I post this on YouTube. So far so good? No questions so far. Okay, let's do another line that has some other fun chords in it. Let's do the second line, which has a D chord. Let's voice that the same way that we've done already for time, okay? And also because the A and the C sharp lead very nicely to it. So we're going to play the, um, I'm gonna pick the string, A string and D string. So here, my A string note is going to be a D for the D chord and, an, and the D string note will be an F sharp, okay? And then moving on to the a chord, let's have the D drop down to a C sharp and an F sharp drop down to the E. I'm choosing notes that we've already looked up right now. Okay, I know I'm going quickly, but you can go back to the book and look at it. Um, hi, Nora, are you playing two bytes per chord or three? Uh, two beats. Um, so I'm playing however many boxes there are. That's a great question. I know that you meant two notes. I said I read two bytes because I was reading, but I like two bytes. Two bytes, two beats notes. I'm playing um, two notes per chord. So I am choosing two out of the three or four notes that are in a chord. And so my choice is called my voice or how I'm voicing the chord. And so the book is full of two note voicings. And I'm playing them, whatever voicing I'm choosing for however many beats the song is. Okay, great. So the I was playing the A chord for three beats, and then I got to the A7 for just one beat, 
and then the D chord. So I'm hoping you're giving me the thumbs up. So I think that that clarifies. I'm playing two two choice two note choices of the chord, and I'm playing for them for however many beats are in the boxes. So sometimes one chord, if I don't have another chord filled out, it means that chord is still the same chord. Okay. So let's move on to this new chord, the B minor chord, which is the two chord. If I look up B minor in the book, remember if you're on your PDF, you can just go to the table of contents and click it really fast and it will take you there, okay? And um, here are my B minor options on the A and the D string. Okay, and let's have, let's choose this B and F sharp. Okay, and the reason being is because we were pre previously playing the E and the C sharp. We can just have our, our C sharp step down to the B and the F sharp step down to the E. Sorry, yeah, right. The E steps up to the F sharp, the C sharp steps down to the B, two different directions. Okay, so we're on the A string note in the B minor chord is a B, and the D string note is gonna be F sharp. Okay, and then we finally get to a five chord, an E chord. So we'll go to an E in the book. And on, oh, one more page, the E chord in the D and the A strings. I've already got a B on my B minor, so I'm going to use good voice leading and keep that note happening. And I'm gonna choose a different note for the bottom. So I'm gonna have the F sharp move up to the G sharp, okay? So notice I'm playing an E chord and I am not playing an E. I chose two different other notes that are in the, in the E chord because the voice leading was better. Okay, so I've got the B remaining and the F sharp going up to G sharp. Now let's talk about this E7. I am going to go to the E7. Boop. And here I am, E7 on the D and the A strings. And I am going to ha try to get um, this, um, motion happening. I'm going to play the G sharp. Let's see. I'll keep the G sharp because that's the third of the chord. Let me keep the G sharp. and I'm going to add the seventh in, which is the D. And this is going to bring us very nicely, very sweetly back to this. Okay. Um, oh, Lisa, that is so nice of you to say. I was working hard on this this morning, trying to make sure everything could be seen. Um, so thank you for saying that. Um, okay, so this E7, the G sharp is gonna poke up to the A and the D is gonna step down to the C sharp. Um, let's play this right now, okay? And um, after we've played this second line, let's go back and do the top line because that's the third phrase, alrighty? So um, I'm gonna grab my fiddle. I'm going to be headless Lauren again so you can see what's happening. I'm going to start right here on the second phrase. My A string note is a D. And my D string note is an F sharp. There we go. That's how you can see it. Okay. So um, uh, this is with a cold up and a button nose and two eyes made out of cold. Um, so that was me demonstrating it for you, but let's talk through it. Also, I just want to give you a heads up that you're playing your G sharp with your high third finger and your D would normally be your normal uh, third finger and they're not right across the string from each other. So you're going to have to get creative. You could either play the D with your third finger like you normally do and your G sharp with a low fourth finger like that because they're a half step apart. Or you could, if you're playing the G sharp with your high th third finger, you're going to have to crunch your second finger right underneath that G sharp to land it on a D. And that's what I did. Okay. So here's the D chord, the four chord. Um, uh, with chord. So this is 
D. Oh, my hand's not in the frame. Sorry, here we go. D. And my two fingers switch for the B and the F sharp for the B minor. And then I keep the B, I walk up to the G sharp for the E chord, and then I crunch my second finger to the D. Okay? So let's do the second line, and then we're gonna go back up to the first line together. So got your F sharp on your D. D. C sharp with your second finger was on the D and it, it slides down to C sharp. A, A7, D, A. Let's try lines one, two, and three. Are you ready to go? Got your A, your pinky, and your C sharp. A, Remember, this is gonna be available for you after, so you can always go back and watch it and pause it and work on it if you want to. And if you get the A book, you can work on anything all the time. Okay, let's play. Um, let's, how, how are we doing on time? We're getting close. I, I wanna be mindful of your time. So let's, um, I am going to um, do the magic cooking show thing, okay? And show you that I have, something all filled in. And I'll take a photo of this and post it in the comments. So you can also play along for the rest of Frosty the Snowman, because the chorus gets really fun. So I'm just gonna talk through the chorus really quick. I know we actually still have a fourth phrase of the, um, of the verse, okay? Da 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 that's the fourth phrase, okay? So it's similar. You can notice um, that a lot of the chords are lining up in the same spot. We've got the D happening, the A happening in the same spot, the B minor happens in the same spot. It's just that the five gets a little pushed because we're gonna resolve. Because, hello, fourth phrase, we gotta hit five one, right? We're done. Okay, so um, this is uh, similar voicings that you've already learned. We had. Um, one other, two other chords in this line. So we have the F sharp major chord, which would be the major six. And I went through and voiced that. And we'd have the A7. Actually, no, we already did the A7. So we're set. There's only one new chord and that would be the major six. Okay, so that would be your F sharp. Where am I? Ah! Okay, F sharp and the A sharp. That's gonna be the fun one there, okay? And then the chorus is pretty much the same thing. The first line of the chorus is pretty much the same thing as the fourth phrase, with this exception of this three chord, the minor three, the C sharp minor, okay? Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same, so we'll voice it. So, here, oh, you know what I did differently, though, is that in the chorus, instead of playing the same chords exactly the same way, I said, hey, let's do it on different strings. So the chorus, you'll notice, um, that I am voicing it on my D and G strings as opposed to my A and D strings. You don't have to do that. I just was trying to be too fancy for my own good. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so I want to just go ahead and play through. Um, I'm gonna start on the fourth phrase. So that's a D chord. Um, with corn, uh, he was made of snow, but the children know how he came to life one day. That's where I am, and I know I'm being headless right now, but I really want you to see my fingers. Please slide the sheet towards me. Did I? Am I? Am I okay? Like this? Is that better? Thank you for telling me. I want you to be able to see it. How's that? Is that better? 
please push the paper all the way to the right of the stand. Okay. How's that? Thank you guys. The other way. Okay. Like that? It seems like I'm, oh, 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 it was perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you so much for letting me know, especially since I'm backwards on this. Okay. Okay, here's the fourth phrase, which is, we're gonna start on the fourth finger on the A string, on the D string. So we've got D, D, A, F sharp major, B, E7, A, A7. Woo! Let's try that again. Here we go. Fourth finger. Um, ring finger. Here we go. D, D, A, A, F sharp major. jump string so you're gonna play that same F sharp on the D string but now play your pinky on the G that's beat two that's what I'm talking about right here okay this is where we switch okay so must have been. so must have been some. here's the C sharp minor Magic. okay and then F sharp and A sharp in that Let's do that again. So we have to start on the F sharp and the high D. Move down to the bottom D. C sharp and E. F sharp, A sharp, which is your high one. Keep the same F sharp with the B. Same B, move down to E. Same E, move over to A. That was me putting a little rhythmic fill in there. I kept the same A. I put the E and the A above it. Okay? And then for the last line, it's the last line of the chorus, the chorus, I slid down and I played my G sharp and the E with my second finger. This is in half position. Um, what if for when they place? Oh, sorry, what's that note? When they, it's wrong melody note. When back up. So we're going to play the G sharp and the E. Keep playing that same G sharp. We're going to now call it A flat. Move up to the F and then move your whole hand up a half step for A and F sharp. That was the E. F diminished. F sharp minor. Then B. E. Okay so the E chord gets two beats. Um, let's see, for when they placed it on his head, that also gets two beats, and then one beat for everything else. It began to dance Alrighty, so let's try the whole chorus. Let's start on this, right here. So you're on your F sharp, and your high D, and you're going to jump down to your low D. So, um... There must have been two, ready, go. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found. Or when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. And then this takes you back up to the top line. Frosty the stone. to the third line which is the fourth phrase right here um what are the words let's see and the children uh and the children say good luck and play just the same as you and me we did it you guys did it um so that is an example of how to use this book. And that was really just a tiny, tiny snippet of what 
you can do with the key of a book um this one right here um are there while while you guys have me if there are any questions about how to use the book and what you might want to do with it or how it may be different than the other books or any question at all that's related to fiddle music life um while I, you have me here i am available and uh for the next couple minutes and if there aren't any questions um i will say thank you so very much for tuning in on your lunch hour or your morning coffee whatever it is um i promise i'll take a picture of this and post it in the comments um so you can get these voice leading um and you can get the chord progression that i chose um and thank you i don't see any questions coming in so congratulations on all that chord work on a tuesday tuesday way uh to start the day all right you guys thank you so much i hope you have a wonderful holiday season and uh make sure to check out jamathorn.com um the blogs and the uh freebie workbooks, the A major scale and the A minor, and check out the ebooks. We've got the chord book, um, which deals with just the one, four, and five of a bunch of keys, and then this new A book that does 20 different chords for the key of A. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, and we will be in touch. Until next time, be well.